If we think of power series as infinite polynomials, we should be able to add, subtract, and multiply power series. We can, after all, add, subtract, and multiply polynomials. And we can, and it works intuitively. What do I mean intuitively? Well, suppose you were adding or subtracting two finite polynomials. You would do this addition component-wise. The constant terms would add, the linear terms would add, and so forth. That is to say, you would get to this. Now, suppose instead of two finite polynomials, you have two power series. We can add power series similarly to how we add polynomials. That is to say, component-wise. Now, we do have a restriction here that we don't have here. If we're going to add two things together, both the things we're adding have to be defined. In other words, we can only do this addition when both of these power series converge. Multiplication is messier in the sense that multiplying to a finite polynomials is messier than adding them, and that's kind of inherited by power series. Still, the fundamental idea is the same. Suppose you are multiplying two finite polynomials together, say a two a third degree polynomials. One way to take this product would be to build it up term by term. So you look for the constant term of the product, and the only way to get a constant is to multiply the constant terms. Then you look for the linear term. And there are two ways to get linear terms here. You could multiply a sub zero by b sub one x. Or you could multiply a sub one x by b sub zero. Which we could then write as a single term. Then you could get your quadratics, and you just ask yourself, what combinations give me a quadratic? Well, a constant times a quadratic would do it. So a sub zero, b sub two x squared, and a linear times a linear would do it. Okay. 
So uh, a sub one, b sub one, x squared, and a quadratic times a constant would do it. And those are the only ways you can get a quadratic from these terms. We could then combine them. And we could find the cubic term, the quartic term, the quintic term, and the sextic sixth term in the same way. Um, you'll notice that these are getting kind of more complicated as you go along, but you can do the multiplication in this fashion. If instead of finite polynomials, you have infinite power series, you can still build the product up like that step by step. So the constant term. Then we look for linear terms. We get a linear term from this. And we get a linear term from this, just like happened up here. Then we look for our quadratic term. We can get a quadratic from these, from these, and from these, just as happened up here. The only difference is that when you have finite polynomials, this process terminates. With these power series, this process does not terminate. You'd have to keep doing this forever. But theoretically, I mean, you could, you can do this multiplication. It's defined and it's defined in the natural way, the same way we define multiplication for finite polynomials. And as with addition, we do need both these power series to converge. Lastly, let's look at composition. Suppose you have a polynomial. If we want to compose that polynomial with a function, with another function, I guess I should say, then we can do that. It's just like any other composition. Now say that we have a function, but instead of being a finite polynomial, it is an infinite power series. Then, as with finite polynomials, we can perform 
composition. And of course, if we have power series, we need to worry about convergence. Let's say that this converges when the absolute value of X is less than R. This is its radius of convergence. Then this composition converges when the absolute value of the inside function is less than R. 